Reasons like that are why I kind of wish I didn't love movies, because I do love them, which means I have to go and see them, which means I have to be around people, and people can be like that. It's why I quite like just talking to this camera, because the camera doesn't answer me back, sometimes it runs out of batteries and I have a go at it, but it's never like that. People are horrible. Put the button back in the box. Starring amongst others Michael B. Jordan, Sylvester Stallone, Dolph Lundgren, Tessa Thompson and Florian Montanu. Directed by Stephen Capel Jr. off of a screenplay by Sylvester Stallone and Jewel Taylor, this is my review for Creed 2. Now Creed 2 catches us up with Adonis Creed who has just become the heavyweight champion of the world. And he's a bit cocky, he's a bit arrogant and he gets challenged to fight the son of the man who killed his dad, Apollo Creed, in the ring way back in the Rocky films of old. And he, of course, accepts the challenge. Things don't go overly well for him and he has to build himself back up again to finally win the fight. And this is a sequel of sorts, not just to Creed, but it's a sequel to Rocky IV as well. And in more ways than just following on the narrative, there are many elements of this movie that feel like it's some sort of hybrid of Creed in the later Rocky movies. And there's been a bit of negative reception that I've seen to Creed 2, but me, personally, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to get the negatives out of the way first, just because I want to talk about what I liked. Um, but there are some problems I've got with it, but some of those problems I actually quite enjoyed. Um, so I'll get them out of the way. Um, Adonis Creed, as a character himself, for the first, at least the first act of this movie, is pretty unlikable. Like, he's reached the top, as it were. He reached what he thinks is going to be the top. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. And he's, yeah, being very arrogant with that, and it's hard to root for him in this first act. Um, obviously, we want him to win, because we like Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed was great. We want him to get to have some vengeance uh, for that. But at the same time, if it wasn't for that backstory and that history, I'm not sure I would have been on Adonis' side here. I'm not saying that I'd be rooting for the for the Drago characters, but at the same time, I wouldn't be too fussed if they won. If, say, if all of the history and the backstory of this was, was taken away, if we hadn't seen the events of Rocky Four play out, then yeah, the way Adonis was acting in this one didn't make me really want him to succeed. Um, thankfully, that's all out of the way after the first act, but it was something I found to be quite noticeable. The Drago characters, the, both of them, there isn't a lot to them. Uh, Dolph Lundgren's character shows no remorse whatsoever for what he did to Creed back in the day. Absolutely none. And to me, that kind of feels like the easy way to go. I think it would have been more interesting if he did have some remorse about it. If you could tell that he felt bad for what he did. But he didn't. And it's a choice. I can't really disagree with the choice. It's a choice they made. And I guess it does kind of fit with the character that we saw. But after all these years, it would be nice to see something from him. Some kind of humanity. Because his arc in this one is that he just wants to be accepted by Mother Russia again. Mother Russia, not a big fan of him since he lost that fight many, many years ago. Uh, he's lost his wife and he's putting all of his hopes on his son. His son's going to be the one to get him back in the Russian good books. And as for his son, Victor Drago is not much to him, really. There seems to be times where the movie wants us to think there's more going on. There's hints here and there that there's something going on behind this guy's eyes, like he's not just a machine. But it never really commits to that. It never really delves into that aspect of either of those two characters as much as it should. And that's a shame because there's some nice moments between them and the performances from both of them are great, but I just didn't get much from the characters. Um, and tonally as well, this film, let's just say, it flicks between the two. I mentioned that it's a part Creed sequel, part Rocky Four sequel, and it is that in tone. There's a montage sequence that feels very out of place with what's gone on. It feels much more like the late 80s Rocky than what we got with Creed. But they're really the only problems I have, and that last one... I loved the montage. I thought the montage was great. I was like this the whole way through that montage. It was so good. And I was fine with the two tones of that as well. I do think they jarred against each other a little bit. Like they didn't perfectly match together. But I had such a great time when it lent into that aspect of it that I genuinely don't really care about that. Um, when it's serious, I was fully invested in the character moments. And there's some very serious moments here, very dramatic moments. It's not just the boxing. We get um, Rocky's, more for Rocky's backstory, more of his family life as well. We get more of Adonis. Tessa Thompson's Bianca gets quite a bit to do here as well with her pregnancy. And there's, there's lots of moments where it does take itself very seriously, but it doesn't feel like it's doing it overly so. Um, I relate to these characters because the scripts are so strong and the performances are so good. But yeah, at the same time, when it goes a bit silly and it does, 
totally cool with it. I'm totally fine with that as well. Maybe that's just because I love Rocky Four as much as I do. And yeah, performances across the board here, amazing. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, I mean, does he ever put a foot wrong? Has he ever been a bad actor, even for like 30 seconds of a scene? Because I've never seen it. Um, he's great in this. He just embodies this character, sort of the rage and the fire behind this character. He completely gets it. He owns it. And he makes me believe in Creed. He makes me believe in this character and what he's going. I'm so captivated just by his performance that I'm torn. I kind of want to see a Creed 3 just to get one more performance out of this guy playing this character. But at the same time, kind of happy where they left it here. But yeah, he's great. And everybody is. Tessa Thompson's brilliant. Sylvester Stallone is always great. And he's just as great here. He's gets a much more subdued performance, much like in the last Creed. He's a very quiet Rocky now. Not that he was ever the most chatty of people. Um, but he does really, really well with it. And I really like how the character winds up at the end of this one. And if it's true that this is the final time that he'll play Rocky on screen, it's a pretty good way to go, I think. But this isn't just character drama and things. This is a boxing movie. So the boxing has to be good, and it is. Um, it's brutal. But you feel the punches that land here. There's certain punches to the ribs that just the music, the sound that's used, and just the expressions that the actors give when those punches happen, they feel so real. Like you feel the pain that they're going through. The fighting in this is brutal, it's relentless, and it's so entertaining to watch. It's almost enthralling. Like Mel afterwards went, I want to watch some boxing now, and she's never shown an interest in boxing before. But it's just such a riveting fight in this film that, yeah. It captivates even non-boxing fans. It's done so, so well. So overall, despite a few issues, I really, really enjoyed Creed 2. I don't think it's quite as good as the first one, but it doesn't miss the mark that much for me at all. I think this was a really, really good time. Uh, even if I did have annoying people talking throughout the movie, yeah, I heard those girls at the start throughout the entire film. Um, I still loved it. I still had a brilliant time with it, and I already can't wait to get it on Blu-ray just to complete the Rocky Creed collection and just watch them all through again, because I never tire of these films apart from Rocky V. Uh, I'm going to give Creed 2 an 8 out of 10. Uh, have you seen Creed 2? If so, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And let me know your favourite Rocky or Creed movie as well. Um, it's been a bit quiet on the review front lately. I haven't done a review for about a week. But I haven't seen anything. Girls in the Spider's Web. I haven't seen any of the other Dragon Tattoo movies. So I didn't feel I could really add anything to the conversation with that. So I skipped it. But we're coming into the busy season now. So more reviews coming soon. Including Ralph Breaks the Internet. Wreck-It Ralph 2 just came out over here yesterday. So I'll be watching that hopefully tomorrow. So look out for the review for that. Do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And you want to see more of them. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well. At Joe Julians. Also my name on Stardust. An app that I haven't used that much actually in the past few days. I really should get back into that. Because I do enjoy that app. Thank you very much for watching this review. And I'll see you on the next video.